Hey guys, I want to talk to you today about the sponsor for this show, which is Aura. And I want to let you know that I'm a reporter in my day job and I use the internet every single day to find people, many people who would rather not be found. And you would be literally shocked if you Googled your own name, uh, you know, maybe using your middle name as well to filter out some results, but you would be shocked of how much of your personal information is already readily accessible online. Your phone number, your home address, your email address. I, there is a ton of information out there if you search for it. And the reason why is because there are data brokers out there who profit by selling your information to robocallers, uh, telemarketers, spammers, people like that who wanna learn more about you. And that's why I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. Aura identifies who those data brokers are that are exposing your personal information, and they automatically submit opt-out requests on your behalf. They'll even opt you out of junk mail and telemarketing lists. So I'd like you guys to use our link. It's aura.com, A-U-R-A.com slash teamhouse to try two weeks and see how many data brokers are sharing your information. Uh, the link is also down in the description, and there's a QR code that you can scan if you like. Um, so please check them out. You'll get two weeks for free. Again, I think you would be totally shocked to find out how much of your personal information is already out there. So go ahead, do a Google search on your own and see what's out there. And if you don't like how much of your personal information is out there, I highly suggest you check out aura.com slash team house to try it for two weeks free and see if they can help get your information private again. That's aura.com slash team house to get two weeks for free. The Team House with your hosts, Jack Murphy and David Park. It was, um, this is a very interesting time, uh, but it seemed like a shift for the mortars from there. 2016, this happens. Yep. You get back home, 2017. What are you hearing about Syria around um, this time frame. Well, it was like our guys, our, our, our mortar guys over there doing uh, very good work. Because um, we had like a lot of good guys in the mortar platoon that were just like, um, you know, like a fork is not just a f eating mm -hmm. utensil. You know, like it can close a circuit. You can kill somebody with a fork. You know, there's like, I can look at that device and turn it into multi-use. And that's a good thing about not having an identity for a while. You start having these guys who are just like, I'm cracking open every manual and I'm becoming the page master, you know, mm -hmm. and learning this stuff. So um, we're learning back now. We just switched out with another battalion and we're getting like some information from them and we're staying on them and we're starting to go, okay, now this time it wasn't like, we didn't have a, a small team of guys jump the chain of command and then go with a, um, prestigious JSOC unit and cross-border operations. Now we're starting to conduct a training cycle with a JSOC unit. Based around that mission profile. Based around that mission profile. And um, yeah, so we started doing that, working that in, and then um, getting information from them, kind of things that we would face. And you we made were, it sound a little earlier, like almost like these mortar teams were like becoming like the Viet Cong, the way they were operating. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was kind of like that, except for instead of like- Conical hats. Yeah, we, we, we just kind of like, we're sitting in lawn chairs and shooting. And it was, was kind of cool. Um, so, and, and then what we had to train for was like, hey, we're gonna, this is kind of like what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be operating, taking over Safe House. Safe House uh, most likely gonna be overrun. This is their most likely course of action. This is the most dangerous course of action. Let's train to the most likely. Let's train for the most dangerous. Let's have all of our TTPs in place, all of our contingencies in place in order to facilitate success based on these courses of action that the enemy may take in this environment, this like heavily non-permissive environment. And so certain things that we were doing, we're getting like extensive training on javelins. We were getting mm -hmm. extensive training on other types of weapon systems that would be advantageous to us, things to disable drones, things to like other weapon systems that we might not have been very familiar with. To us and our partner, um, our like you know sister unit that we were working with that it was at a higher tier, um, and it was kind of funny because you know I was a like heavy weapons um, qualified guy, and 
the guys from that particular uh, element were asking me, like, hey, man, do you know how to do this? And I was like, you don't know how to do this? I was like, all right. Yeah, this is how you do it, man. And I would, like, you know, give a fam on how to run through uh, the procedures to fire certain weapon systems. And um, it, was, it was kind of fun. It was kind of neat to, to be up there. And it was... Um, and it was a good kind of like learning experience. And then, you know, then we went forward. Yeah. And so. Um, Going forward with those guys, were they different in the, in the sense of they respected your experience and familiarity with, with, with the weapon systems? So you would be actually a part of the mission planning process? Yes. And the crazy thing was, is like, I'm talking to this guy, like, I know, I don't know what your rank is. But like you won't tell me your rank. You just <laughs> telling me to call you first name and like so I'm calling you first name and like I'm just like, yeah, so man, you do this and you do this. And he's like, Man, like that's really good. I'm like, Wow, I've been in this abusive relationship. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, who are you? Right. Like, who are you? Like, you know, Wait, what's going on pushing here? Pushing my hair back. Like, yeah. what's going You're on? Do I look, like, do I look is it, okay? Is it coming? Yeah. You're like, when's it gonna come? You know, like, dang, <laughs> man. Like, this is positive reinforcement. He's listening. Hey, 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 Les, what do you think we should do here? Right. What? <laughs> you know, uh, okay, fine. Th thanks. Uh, yeah. It's like, wait, is there a problem? No, I just, no, one, no one's ever asked me that. <laughs> right, right. I've always wanted to do this. Right. You know? Um, yeah, so that's kind of what it was. It was like, there would be some type of um, operation that we were heading to. Like, hey, this is the objective that we want to go take care of and they kind of be like hey what, what do you see what, what position does this position work for you it was a very mutual like it wasn't like hey you're gonna be here right it was like hey man does this look good i don't know i don't know what that thing does you know and then you're like okay yeah i could do that and then then i would talk to them about hey man like what if you know we wrangled all the cattle and put them in the pen right and then to get more bang for the big bang, like more buck for the big bang, you know, now we can strike it. Like I was like, let's, let's fix them. Stop trying to get me to shoot guys in the open. Right. I just want to corral. And then we started developing these certain ways and systems to really increase the effectiveness of our um, lethality or effectiveness of lethality. Just increase our lethality yeah, yeah. and effectiveness. Yeah. Um, because the thing was, it's like, uh, what ended up happening is I, I believe during that run out of all teams, my team was probably the most successful in conducting those operations. And that, and that was largely because uh, the team that we were involved with, as you guys know, there's personality differences across all the teams in um, certain JSOC units. And um, s luckily, um, the team that I was with had a personality very similar to mine. Mm -hmm. They actually almost, the team members called me like the team whisper, the team leader whisper. There's a name of the team leader. And it's like, you're the so-and-so whisper because he only listens to you. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, right. this guy was like, uh, I'm kind of known for kind of being a bit of a wild card kind of guy. You know, where I'm kind of like, I joke and I can be like kind of playful, but like also switched on. You know, and so I remember one time I was instructed to destroy bridges along the Euphrates River. So I demolished several bridges. And uh, then the SDF goes, oh, no, um, we need the bridge to cross. <laughs> and I was like, all right, we'll get you another bridge. So we, like, <laughs> built these, like, whatever stupid bridges that cross this river and a certain point or stream. And I was out there, and this is before I got pushed to the other team. When mm -hmm. that guy's like, that guy's on my team. And then we had our good personality thing. I was like, I was like, you tell me take out a bridge or take out the bridge. I put a new bridge in, forget about it, whatever you want. You know, I was just, he was like, he was like, dude, you're funny. I want you on my team because like I'm in combat doing this type of stuff, just right. having a good time. I'm usually the guy, I guess, when things were really bad, like I could say things and act in a way to uplift the rest of the guy, whereas... I guess the morale would elevate the morale. It's really all about morale, and that's why I take more pride and not like, do you know how many people I killed? Or, right. oh, no shit, there I was, and I steadied my aim, and I racked the run time right there. It's like, I don't <laughs> really care about that. I cared more about, like, right. you know, hey, this is a tough job, 
And I want this place to be more of an enjoyable place to work, and I want it to be a place where guys can be proud that they worked instead of miserable and just dead inside when they leave this place. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and so, um, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting experience there. Um, and then, um, you know, you're probably going to ask me about... Well, I, I mean, just sort of a big picture. Yeah. Uh, the scheme and maneuver over there at the time was, yeah. I mean... You guys were running in sort of an unconventional warfare campaign, if I understand it right. Yeah. JSOC guys, you guys doing indirect fire and the yeah. SDF. And this is just part of the overall campaign. You guys are yeah. pushing ISIS back yeah. towards the river. Yeah. So the SDF dudes, like, it was pretty cool. Is like anytime I met an SDF element, I would like um, almost like joke and act like a stereotypical Hollywood American mm -hmm. on purpose. Mm -hmm. And they knew I was doing a bit. Yeah. And I'd be like, Toe the line, maggots! You know? Yeah. And they'd be like, Whoa. and I go, what's your name, son? And, uh, you know, but I'd be like, um, you know, I'd be like, Navi mean less, Navi techea. Like, I would then say it to, like, translate so they know that, like, okay, this is what I'm actually asking you. And i get the name of all the guys. And then I'd be like, you know, to, they don't, like, patent motivate them almost in a way um, to where I would, like, just kind of jokingly. And then I'd go out and then conduct these operations. And a lot of times they'd be like our security, our escort through the AO. They would clear out areas to make sure that there were no mines. Obviously, we had our uh, multi-purpose canines and our EOD guys that also uh, facilitated that. But they were a very good partner for us in comparison to what I was used to seeing. And, um, uh, and it was just funny that like, after a while of engaging with these guys and kind of you know, in interacting them with them on a human level... Like these guys, like I would walk up in a group of guys who was like drinking chai. They love chai on the flat. And um, I'd walk up and they would like stand up at the position of tension. And like, we'd be like, whoa, hey, you know, like I was like, well, that's kind of cool, though. Like, like I haven't even met these guys before, but now they're like standing up at the position of tension. Like, you know, now there's like whispers going on. Like, hey, that's the guy who's like pretty cool, you know, like. So that was like pretty interesting to go through that. And then eventually um, I would say that. Um, so there was this thing called like. Syria.liveuamap.com where you could track day by day what was happening. And I was using that when I was there. I would go on open source uh, like that and it would almost collect open source for me. And I would look and I would like shoot mortars and I would see like <laughs> a Twitter post or something right. from an ISIS guy. Right. And it would be like, oh yeah, they missed. They were like this far off. And I was like, to the east, yeah. <laughs> Got you now, you know, and then, you know, or something like that. But, like, um, you would see, like, the map has different colors. Like, this is the SDF. This is ISIS. This is whatever. And then you would just see us roll tag <laughs> and move down all the way across the